Well, Eagle Bay is a 260, how many is it? Three or five. Something like that. 263, 265 units. Um, right now, the Eagle Bay is going through the draft environmental impact statement. Um, many of you and others have submitted comments or had submitted comments on that draft environmental impact statement, which now the the applicant had to take and include in what they're going to call a final environmental impact statement, an FEIS. And they're in the process of working on that right now. I had um, foiled a copy of a draft of that and was told by the town that they wouldn't supply a draft copy. We'd have to wait until it's adopted by the town. Uh, I check, I'm going to check on that because I thought draft documents were foilable. But in any case, they are working on the final environmental impact statement. But as you, many of you know, you know, the problems there are, uh, again, high density on the river with very little access. They're talking about using that Tompkins Avenue underpass uh, if, if the beach road floods out, which it does so often, as uh, an entrance and exit, uh, which can't even, I don't have a fire truck would even get in there. So I just don't understand how the fire department and how the different uh, reviewing agencies can go along with this. So I had sent in a FOIL request for all of the reviewing agency's comments from February 1st, which, which was before they actually started. So I got them all. And I don't know if I emailed it out to everybody, but I will post it so you can download it. Uh, I'm interested in seeing what the Army Corps of Engineers has to say, what the Department of State has to say. These were all comments that were not available during the public hearing. And we objected to that when they had the public hearing for the draft environmental impact statement. We had no access to the comments from these agencies. And that's, again, when you have a public hearing, it's nice to be able to look over what these different agencies say so you can actually include that in your comments and these were not available at the time and yet they still closed the public hearing so again this is the process for the town you know close the public hearing before all the documents are available give me a hard time getting them they're claiming i have to wait 20 days which is really 30 days because it's 20 business days to get documents i said that's ridiculous these are documents that are sitting in a folder of an applic an active application before the board I said, the secretary for the planning board should be able to pull that PDF out and send it to you. It takes two minutes to do that, not five days and not 20 days. Uh, and that's what they're doing. They're playing that game. So I wrote a letter to the supervisor before the holiday. And I said, if you're going to make me wait 20 days for items for the foil of an active application, I said, the next meeting is going to happen before I even receive the documents. I said, that's obstructing the public's access to these documents. We have a right to see these documents before the hearings. So anyway, I got them this morning now, um, so I, I can make them available. Um, the, I also asked for a copy of all of the interested agencies who are being on the mailing list for the town, and that's included in that email as well. So if you haven't received a copy of it, I, I just got it this morning. I will uh, post it, and then you can download it. And I haven't had a chance to go through them yet, through the um, comments yet. But... Um, you know, there's going to be more to look at. So that's probably going to be on the agenda for the, uh, Dermot, did you say the 25th of um, July? Is that, is that the Thursday? Um, the so, next yeah, 25th of July? That, yeah, it's the next, it's the fourth what's Thursday. What's the next uh, I mean, what yeah. meeting? I can look at the, um, the calendar too. The calendar is, um, is the fourth Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's the 23rd of July. The 23rd of July is the fourth Thursday of July. That's when they're going to have probably Baymore back on the agenda. The public hearing will have been closed. They'll probably make a decision. They'll have it written. Just to give you an idea, when Baymore was before the board, just to go back to that for a minute, and Ira Emanuel was pushing them for a vote, they didn't even have their decision written yet. They had no plans of closing the hearing and actually making a decision that night, and that's what he wanted. So. You could see who was running the meeting by the way it was handled. Uh, but it will be back on the agenda on Thursday along with Baymar and I guess a few other items, the smaller projects that are gonna be before the board as well. So Baymar I'm concerned about because um, the town changed the zoning to allow mixed use with commercial uh, use. They're gonna have a restaurant and a store there, which was a good idea, but they allowed a too high a density um, development for these condos. And they even increased that density when they changed the zoning a, a couple of years ago, I guess it was mm -hmm. 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, they changed the zoning to allow, instead of requiring a one-to-one -one boat slip for each condo that unit that was built, they said, no, we only have one boat slip for every three condos that are built. So in effect, they are allowing a higher density 
um, building um, by, by allowing fewer, uh, by requiring fewer boat slips. Because there would have been a limit on the number of boat slips they could have built there. And that would have limited the number, limited the number of condo units. <sighs> so we have a high density project there. Uh, fire access, I would think, would be a concern. I'd like to see what the, the fire department has to say about it. And the police department has already said they're going to require two more police officers for that project uh, in, when it's done and also another police car. So, you know, what happens with these projects, as I'm sure you're aware, is uh, the costs that get pushed off onto the public are oftentimes not discussed um, while the project is being reviewed. And Space asked for a, what they call the cost benefit analysis and to see what the actual tax revenues would be for this versus the costs to the town. Uh, the sewer system is gonna have to be increased in order to increase capacity. And I think, and uh, my feeling is without proof, uh, this is the reason why the town is giving the uh, Eagle Bay developer more units is because they want more money to put into the town sewer system. It seems like a really way of backward way of thinking in my view uh, that you're going to overdevelop the river in order to help finance the sewer system. But I think that's what's happening here. Um, Two cops, that's 200 grand at least, right? I don't Probably. know. What minimally. Gonna, minimally. I don't know what they're going to pay per unit for the sewer well, the pensions and all that other stuff oh well, yeah right well then what you cool. haven't considered is that the town highway department will have to buy new trucks specific to the road widths of what the parking will be ah. <laughs> oh my goodness they we bought wing trucks larry's last purchase was wing trucks you can't put a wing truck down there you haven't got that kind of width so in order to plow all of that which will be town road uh, Larry's going to need new trucks. If he needs new trucks, he needs new men. How many new personnel are we going to add to the town infrastructure? The other thing most people don't realize about the application is it states very clearly it will be gated. Yeah. Well, how can it be a public road if it's gated? It's a really good question, but that's what's going on. Yeah. The town, the town did push for public access on the river. That was their big push when they did. And the they told them no, George. Yeah. But they told them is, no. This is supposed to be public access. Some of the concerns that we have are the way people are going to feel coming into there and whether there really is public access. If you look at the maps, you know, not, without getting into the details of this, we're not going to have time to talk about the details. I'd like to have another call specifically on Eagle Bay, maybe before the next planning board meeting or just after it, because they're not going to have a they're not going to have a public hearing at the next meeting. They'll present their plans. Um, is the actual pathway that goes along the river dead ends on a parking lot. <laughs> Originally, that pathway along the river was supposed to extend into whatever they built south of this project and become a real pathway along the river. But if you look at the plan, the current plan, the pathway dead ends into a parking lot. It's like, that's where you end, in a parking lot. So there's really no continuity for a greenway or a pathway along the river. It's also a fairly narrow pathway um, and there were some questions about the amenities that they would or wouldn't put in because they were balking about some of the stuff they originally agreed to. So we'll have to see how the map comes back, the revised map and how the draft environmental impact statement has now transitioned over to the final to see what's going to be included. But concerns about high density, about access to the property. We know that uh, the county has no plans to make improvements on Beach Road. We know that floods out often. God forbid, say there's a fire there at the same time we have a major storm and that road floods out. What kind of access are we going to have through that little hole in the uh, tunnel underneath the CSX road? That's pretty much going to be the access route. Um, and people coming in, people trying to leave, or maybe fire trucks trying to come in. <laughs> I don't see how that is workable. And I'm not an engineer, but it just seems to me that's a really um, a risky and not a very good example of our first development on the waterfront as an example of what we want on our waterfront. Let me, if, let me, let me ask ahead, a quick please. question because sure. since you're talking about money uh, that the county's not going to provide to improve that beach road. That's what they said, yeah. After Sandy Hook, there was a big, and I forget the name of the project, but I know Stony Point got a few million dollars, I thought. No, we didn't. With regards to the work that was supposed to be going on there. What occurred? because I participated in that committee okay. against my better judgment. We spent 18 months, um, I'll think of the name of the project, came up with all kinds of ideas, 
and submitted them to the state. And what we've done to date is wasted money on additional engineering surveys. No work has ever been done. Um, it doesn't meet Governor Cuomo as he developed the project, and I'll think of it in a minute. Uh, he changed the criteria. Every time you thought you had it, he changed the criteria. And at the end, after we all participated, his last criteria was you, if you were a business person, you had no vote in the decisions because you were a business person. So therefore you had to sign a release that said you would not do business in the town of Stony Point for three years. Mm. I hate to tell you, how think, many of us had businesses in the town of Stony Point? The I, I, program was wholly misrepresented by his representatives. Was that the New York Rising program? That's the, the one. Community, I'm yes. About. Mm -hmm. And the work done out of that was incredible. Do you know they don't even look at it? They've got it buried. Wow. I, it buried. I mean, I can send it to yeah. you. I'll show you where it is on their website. Yeah. No, I have it. I think I have the document. I thought I thought the town had gotten some money. Not a penny. There's also a um, question about, well, originally, the guess the, as part of that process, they had asked the neighbors along Beach Road if they wanted to have that road improved, which would mean raising the road up. And of course, they felt that a lot of that drainage would end up in their yards. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it they would. Were, they were not interested. So the town's opinion, uh, after talking to the supervisor, it appears the town's opinion is, well, they didn't want that work done. Now we don't have the money to do it. And I'm saying, well, how can you improve 263 or 265 condo units right down the road there uh, on a road that now floods out all the time with no plans yeah. to improve it? Is that going to become a cost back to the taxpayers? It is a county road. I don't know if the county considered paying for that, but we'll all end up paying for it in some way. But does that become a requirement now? No. What they did, if you remember in the draft environmental impact, is that they said they had nothing to do with beach road yes that the only part of the road they had to worry about was that little connection road from beach road in Hudson that little Park. it goes right past uh ludaney's house that's the only public road section and in fact they claim they would have no impact on county roads right their big impact was to put stop signs at that intersection of Tom. Mm -hmm. That was the, the, the result of the traffic, so-called traffic study. Um, I, I said, you did a traffic study. Did you do a traffic study with the idea that Beach Road would be flooded and there'd be nowhere to go that way? You'd have to go through Tompkins Avenue. The supervisor well, they the claim that they, they that could they're actually take, use Tompkins Avenue. George, they're going to take the secondary entrance off of Oval Court. Yeah. Which is right yeah. on the other side of the AT&T right of way. Yes. Hudson Terry. That's lower than the water level to begin with. And it's only, I think, 12 feet high. So you could not get. So now does our fire department have to buy special equipment? There is a underpass, as Susan says, a little north of Tompkins Avenue um, going into what I think is called Lincoln Oval or that area. Mm -hmm. One of those areas. This is a, four, this is a four story building, right? Yeah. At least. Okay, so how are you going to get a hook and ladder? Because if you have a four-story building, you're yeah. going to have to have the fire equipment to oh, yeah. service that if this thing goes up, you know, in the middle of the night and getting a, getting a hook and ladder through that right. little entrance. It will not happen on either side. You can only bring a hook and ladder in from the grassy point side. Right. That's it. Which is, means that's the flooded road. So if it happens, if that fire happens during a major storm, I mean, I guess they're thinking the fire trucks can get through. Well, I hope so, you know, because that's a flooded road. We know how it floods, even with a minor storm now, you know. And I guess that other road, beginning to say the other road just north of Tompkins Avenue, they want to dig that down, what, three feet or something like that, in order to make the road uh, That's height. a little road. That's a little road. If you see where that is going into Lincoln Oval, it really goes into a neighborhood, but that would be another access point, but it would be digging down three feet. I don't know how you do that and have that not flood out as well. So went down there and it's even hard to back out of there. Yeah. Okay, oh, let now. me help you guys out. They want a tunnel under an overpass that the railroad runs on. Right. You can't disturb, I mean, correct me. I mean, I only come from an Italian contracting family, but I am a girl. <laughs> uh, you take that into consideration. You might want to take into consideration <laughs> I'm blonde half the time. Yeah. But, but you can't dig the road. You can't. 
You would destabilize right, the right. over. I would think that's right. How could you dig it? In the 1900s, yeah. you'll probably have a better date, Jeff, than I will. But you cannot, I, I mean, do they want to do it like a French drain, come five feet off and dig out the middle? You can't do that because A, the water level in that area is much higher, the groundwater, and B, to disturb underneath the underpass, I think would destabilize the overpass, the railroad overpass. I think that's I'm right. If you sure. dug that road out the same width going down from the walls, I think you're right. I think why wouldn't that disturb the actual stability of that wall? Because now not disturb it, totally destabilize the whole thing. And, I, and would CSX even go along with that? Wouldn't they have something to say? That's their trust. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think Greg Julian's joined us. Greg, are you there? He's still mm -hmm. muted. Let me see if I can take him off. Uh, ask to end you. And you know what the worst part of this is? Welcome, welcome, welcome Greg. Hi, Greg. We have an emergency management plan. Uh -huh. There is no emergency management plan. Mm -hmm. There isn't any discussion of one. There isn't one included in this plan. Um, there was a man who died of a massive heart attack. Um, I don't think it was, what was the one that Beach Road flooded? I, I, I'm going to get them both. Andy. But he died. He died on Wayne Quartz's property. Mm. And it was, he just had a heart attack. I mean, it wasn't Wayne Quartz, it wasn't anybody's fault. He had a heart attack and they couldn't get to him. Oh, well. Yeah. Does the county have an emergency management plan involving things like this? The county must have, which means this has to submit to it, but they haven't done it. So there's a lot of open questions, you know, and they're going into the final environmental impact statement. And the question is going to be, how are they addressing the draft environmental impact statement comments that we submitted, many of us and others have submitted, uh, to come up with this final uh, impact statement, which I asked for, like I said, I asked for a copy of it in draft form, but they're not willing to provide that um, until it's been adopted by the town. So whether that gets discussed at the next planning board meeting on um, July 23rd, uh, I suppose they will, because David Ziegler at the last planning board meeting, the one we spoke about where they only gave two days notice, uh, he wasn't really prepared uh, to take a, speak about Eagle Bay. I think they've been on a sort of a break at this point. Uh, I'm not sure if any of the interested agencies were doing their reviews or anything at this point, but uh, I expect he'll come back at that meeting more prepared and uh, probably have some form of the, of the environmental impact statement, the final one done. I will no, tell you the Oh, it doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, sir. It doesn't make sense to me that with a railroad behind this densely dense project, that an emergency. I mean, the train derails it, it, and slides into this building. And you, you're not going to worry about the hook and ladder. You're going to worry about you know an like apocalypse. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, you got you got trains rolling through there with all sorts of tem chemicals. What are they going bomb trains to? Are they yes. rolling through there? Yes. So, I mean, it's just, I mean, from a, just a, a common sense, no partisan, no, no nothing, just, just, just basic question. The emergency that could occur from that demands a plan exactly. and it needs cooperation with the railroad. I mean, I, I, don't know, I must have fallen asleep in college during that part. <laughs> I don't understand that. You're right. That discussion was brought up at the public meeting by one of the people who spoke. Yes. So I think it was Beckerly. Yes. Yes, Stephen, that's right. You know, there's two points to that. One is, of all people, I've heard Howie Phillips use that example uh, to um, articulating concern about that, which always surprised me. But moreover, there has been a, 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 again, a serious discussion, not generated from Rockland County, but generated from um, New Jersey and the Port Authority of Renew, because there's a two rail system going up to Stony Point about having a commuter line. Same rail as the freight line? Well, two in the morning and two in the evening. <laughs> so, so not only do you have bomb trains or, or trains with toxic chemicals, you're going to have commuter line passengers in a potential accident involving a dense housing 
facility. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if that happens, you're talking, you know, hundreds, hundreds of people. Uh, well, we're and, saying and the it's response a is it would not. I mean, it's not even been discussed. Nobody plans for the future. Well, we're saying it's going to be a potential accident. Why? Because of the bomb trains? Or what are we saying? Or the re reason? Well, for just a railroad in general. But I'm saying that there's a difference between a freight and a, and a passenger. Everyone knows that. We have to go through that. But the thing is, if you're talking about casualties, and my, my only, um, my, my point about this is up in Mohawk, along the Mohawk River, they had a derailment. It was a freight train. And it was mm -hmm. scattered. It was scattered for hundreds of yards on either side of oh. the railroad line and even into the river, I think. So if you had a passenger liner train come through there and derail and skip into this building, you know, you got the hundreds of people living there, people visiting. I mean, worst case scenario, which you have to make plans for, and it's a busy Sunday and you got people on the river and it's, and well, of course, mm -hmm. it can be or, or any time. It's, it's just getting to, it's like a plane crash. You got people all over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'd like to have a separate call to get in a, another meeting like this to have a discussion about Eagle Bay because there's a lot of issues. We can't discuss them all right now. But what bothers me most about it is not just the high density and the issues with this project itself is the lack of vision, in my view, lack of vision for the river. And, and you know, we have one chance to develop our waterfront. We have a local waterfront plan. We have obviously changes to the zoning that were done. Um, what is our vision for the next piece of property south of this? Are we going to see more condos because that marina might feel it's advantageous to them to sell out and, and we could build the same thing that Herskowitz is building and we can make a nice profit on that and that's going to be another condo unit we'll have there. Uh, what are we going like to get out of straw or, or uh, Orange Town, uh, the one on the river there? We should have a moratorium. I said to the supervisor, we should have a moratorium on our waterfront right now and re-examine those zone changes they made because obviously they increased the density by changing the number of uh, boat slips. But now the thing is another developer could come in uh, potentially in Patsy's Marina, I think they call it, right? That's south of there and mm -hmm. do exactly the same thing. Uh, and is that what we want? You know, maybe we want restaurants. Maybe we want some of the kind of commercial uh, revenue producing because we know that bringing in people we already know the police department's talked about two car, uh, a car and two more police officers. What other kind of costs are we going to end up incurring as a community by putting more people down there? So, you know, I just think that we have to have a vision. There's no vision in the town, in my view, for the riverfront. Um, they just go piecemeal. Whoever comes to them next with something, it seems there's no real overall plan. And I think I told the supervisor this, this is nothing new, you know, that we should have a meeting, a town meeting, not a, not a, a meeting on a project, but a town meeting to talk about our, our future of our waterfront and put a moratorium in place. They can do that and redevelop our, our master plan for the waterfront to come up well, with I, what we want down there, not what the next developer comes in and wants to build. Well, you, we'll hit the, you hit the nail on the head with redeveloping the, the, the amendment to the 1995 master plan that they did in 2013 because that's what they have to do and that's where they talk about developing the waterfront because yeah. it was an economic you know yeah, uh, yeah. assessment for the town right for, to make money so yeah i was on that committee and the thing is they had a local we have a local waterfront plan which not every community has you know and they, they rush through it a lot of times if something has to get approved oh yeah we have a local waterfront plan but they change things without really fully understanding it. I didn't agree. Jeff Finn was the supervisor when they made these amendments to the current zoning that allowed Eagle Bay. So what he came up with with Wayne Quartz, you know, Wayne Quartz wanted to originally develop that property. Now we got Eagle Bay. It's a much bigger project than what Wayne Quartz was closer to, I think, around 200 units. So we got something very different in, in Monaghan by changing the number of, of uh, boat slips to condo ratio, increased that by another 30%. In my view, that's the way it happened in the end, because uh, by allowing them to build more condo units without requiring boat slips. That's in effect what we got a 30% increase. Uh, and that's why we're up to 265 or whatever. Okay. Um, unless anybody else has something else to say about Eagle Bay, there's more documents, which I will make available that I just got from the town, the foiled documents. So we can do a little more reading and then have another, maybe another meeting on this, uh, maybe even prior to the next planning board meeting or around that time. I'd, I'd like to have a little more information from some of the interested agencies. And those are the documents I was sent. Well, you got the COVID thing still going on, and it's not going to be over by the fall. It looks, yeah. you know, things are being shut down. And this is, you know, when they're not being looked at over their shoulder, you know, anybody. And this is, it seems to me that this is, 
you know, I, and I would pursue, I, you know, like I said, I don't know what the, the rules and regs are open public meeting laws, but the, it, you know, there, there's not going to be input, it, it looks like. It's I'm concerned be, about this room. Okay. And I'm concerned about these Zoom meetings for major public hearings. I mean, you know, things can slide through. People are not necessarily always used to using this technology. Uh, oftentimes, if you have a lot of people in a meeting like this, you don't know there's how many people are in the meeting and who, they, who are those people. Uh, is it an effective way to see graphics on the screen What they try to show maps? Uh, are they going to provide those graphics in advance so you can actually see what you're talking about? I mean, there's a lot of things that, that this is not a direct replacement for an in-person meeting, in my view. And when you have a major project like this, a public hearing, I think we should be concerned about using this technology and whether it can be used to slip things through or whether it's going to be used to really be transparent and, and involve the public, which the town tends not to do in a general sense anyway.